We all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. But what are some of the things that someone like myself would have to look out for or ask when it comes to the contractor selection? What are some of the some of the guidelines you would you would recommend? Yeah, see, oh, you know, the course of my thirty year career, it seems hard to say thirty years. <laughs> I wish it wasn't that long, but it is, unfortunately. Uh, you know, what I did was I'd get in these litigation matters. I say, you know, what's kind of the common thread? What am I seeing here mm-hmm. that gets people in trouble? So, you know, probably 10 years ago, I just started preparing a list and said, okay, well, this is how I saw this would come up. And I tinker with this list like all the time. And so what I did finally was I prepared this sheet that you have in front of you yeah. called the key factors when hiring a contractor. And basically it goes through the processes. It gives you a website so you can go to and you can refer to to see, like, you know, the superior court, see how many times they've been sued. You know, being sued doesn't necessarily mean anything, but who they hire as attorneys does. And also what really matters is what's the outcome of those disputes. You want to see them settle things rather than fight things tooth and nail. Right. And Interesting. So, so that, you know, so I got a bunch of websites in there and, and some other information uh, that people can go through. I mean, there's going to be problems in every single project. And what you want to find is a contractor who's willing to work their way through those problems. Right. You know, so if you look at the law firm they hire, for example, all law firms have personalities. Mm-hmm. If they hire a law firm that takes everything to the mat, I mean, that's, that's just not a situation that you want to get involved yeah, in. So, right. so what this does is it just gives you like basic, you know, like one of the questions, just basic information. When were they formed? Right. Like right now, I'm dealing with a litigation with a contractor made up a, fo- a fake company and signed a contract under the name of a fake company. That company doesn't exist. Wonderful. He is then uninsurable, right? Mm. He cannot get insurance for this project. So I've got uh, directions to the state, you know, the, the uh, Secretary of State's sure. office. Sure. So you can yep. figure out how long they've been in business. Are they licensed? Are they registered? If they're registered, is there any sort of claims history on their registration. So there's a lot of stuff that the homeowner can do online to kind of get some background information on the company what, itself. What are, what are some of the things that I should be, as a, as a consumer, ask a particular construction company to give myself confidence? Yeah, what you want to find out more than anything else, it, it really kind of depends on the on the where we are in the construction cyclical, na- you know, construction is very cyclical. Right. Mm-hmm. right now we're in a recovering phase. All right. We're not at a fully mature construction phase. We're in a recovering phase. So what's sure. the greatest risk and reward of a recovering phase? And that kind of dictates some of the questions that you want to ask your contractor. Like the risks right now are 75% of all construction failures happen during a recovery mm-hmm. because the contractors have the work, but they don't have the working capital to carry the work. So there's your biggest risk right now. Okay, so, so you know somebody might say, oh, well, then I'm not going to get a contractor during a recovery phase. Well, that's not necessarily the truth because right now you can get your best contractors and you can still get a decent deal. Mm-hmm. You know, once the construction uh, economy totally heats up and you're competing with China's of the world for sheetrock, aluminum, concrete, well, then you deal with astronomical prices. So right now the advantages, what you can leverage out of this kind of an environment is that you get good contractors, you get decent prices. All right. And right now, at this particular time, you have low interest rates. I mean, it's like the, it's right. a very, very good time to undertake a construction project. So how do you-